Spoiler warning for ReZero anime onlys. If you don't want to get spoiled at all, this is your cue to leave, as I will be talking about the ReZero web novel up to arc 7 and 8. There is nothing but massive spoilers ahead. You have been warned. For the longest time, I've been trying to understand why I haven't been loving ReZero recently. I keep picking up and dropping ReZero Arc 7 like a terrible ex-girlfriend that I can't get over. I keep remembering the good times and keep thinking to myself, I can fix her, she'll come around and things will be better again, but I keep getting burnt and let down. Maybe it's just that I'm getting older and realizing that calling everything that you really like a masterpiece kind of sets up any show, game, or movie for failure. Before you click off the video and call me a ReZero hater, I actually still love ReZero and have a soft spot for it in my heart. Believe me, my IRL friends will tell you that I was that guy who went around telling everyone that ReZero is a flawless masterpiece and if anyone had problems with the anime, I would always say, read the web novel, the anime doesn't do it justice. Just because I like or love something doesn't mean I can't criticize it. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I've hinted at or outright told you that I don't like Arc 7 and Arc 8. For the longest time, I couldn't tell why, but after two years of experiencing other media and studying more about writing and analyzing media, I finally caught up to Arc 8, and that's when I realized why. The main reason is that I can't stand the current version of Subaru in Arc 7 and 8. Before you pull out your pitchforks, let me explain. I became a diehard ReZero fan not because of Amelia or Rem, but because of Subaru's struggles and journey as a young man to learn to love himself and become a better person. We start off seeing Subaru as a very sheltered, arrogant kid who has never felt the touch of a woman or had one give him attention other than his mom. Once Subaru gets attention from Amelia and gets his ego inflated from saving and helping her a couple of times, Subaru gets completely humiliated and humbled during Arc 3. He starts to drop the facade of being a strong, confident hero and becomes vulnerable to Rem, talking about his self-doubt and insecurities. This resonated with me because as a man, I get it. A lot of us won't admit it, because a lot of us grew up being told something along the lines of, don't cry like a baby or a girl, you need to be strong. A lot of men suffer from some form of toxic masculinity. I used to suffer a form of it as well, not like incels or Andrew Tate stands though. I refused to cry in front of others and always kept my emotions to myself. I never opened up to anyone because I would feel weak and ashamed that I wasn't man enough to solve my problems on my own. I would keep going at it alone, constantly banging my head against the wall, hoping that this time, things would change. I would continue to curse myself for my own weakness and shortcomings and let that self-hatred fester. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's the exact same thing that Subaru feels from arcs 1 through 4. Subaru physically can't talk about his failures and deaths due to Return by Death's taboo, which is a beautiful way of symbolizing toxic masculinity that prevents some men from being vulnerable and talking about their problems. In Season 1 Episode 8, when Subaru is at his limit for not being able to solve the mansion loop, He's deeply ashamed for falling asleep on Amelia's lap after becoming so vulnerable and talking about what scares him. It's a very touching scene and it breaks my heart that some people find Subaru falling for Amelia and having a girl be nice to a loser like Subaru cringe or unrealistic because I can relate to Subaru for the most part. I got cut from my high school basketball team in 10th grade after killing it in the tryouts and working my ass off all year to get a lot better. It was easily one of the lowest points of my life. I cursed myself for not being good enough and became very bitter and jealous towards the people who made the team over me, who I knew that I was better than and didn't even put in the work to get better than they were last year. I isolated myself from everyone at school and just kept to myself. I was afraid of people looking down at me and thinking, damn. He was pretty good at basketball, why couldn't he even make the JV team? Especially when you have an uncle who is well known in the community for being really good at basketball. Naturally, people would compare me to my uncle and say, wow, you're just like your uncle when he was your age, or wow, you're worthy of your family's name. Those words used to give me confidence and a lot of pride, but after I got cut, it felt like there was a voice inside of my head telling me, why aren't you good enough? Where did I go wrong? The voice got even louder when people in my own family started looking at me differently after I got cut, wondering what went wrong. There was never a moment where I wasn't doubting myself and wondering why I wasn't able to do things right anymore. I kept running away from my problems instead of confronting them head on and allowing myself to move on and start to heal. Instead, I was bottling up my self-hatred and bitterness, letting it fester in my heart as it slowly consumed me. 
As the dark cloud surrounding me grew and became more oppressing every day, a ray of light cut through. I was very lucky, as most people don't even get the chance to get out. I was fortunate to have a girl like Amelia extend their hand to me and comfort me, to tell me that things will be okay, and to try my best no matter what happens. That one act of kindness melted my heart that had been frozen from my bitterness and self-hatred, and started my journey of becoming a better person and learning to love myself. When I look at Subaru, it's like I'm looking into a mirror and seeing a version of my high school self, which helped me get invested in this character and appreciate how human he really felt, as I've experienced similar feelings to him. I was so happy to see Subaru learn to share the burden with his friends and realize that he can't do everything on his own in Arc 4 through Otto's help. He begins to practice self-compassion and realize that he's not just a return by death tool. After Arc 4, it does seem like Subaru suffers from imposter syndrome, as he constantly believes that he is not worthy of the heroic praises and constantly downplays his abilities and feats. These feelings linger in Subaru until Arc 6. In Arc 6, Subaru loses his memory, and when he wakes up, he's surrounded by a bunch of strangers who speak very highly of him and tell him how awesome he is. The new Natsuki Subaru doesn't have much time to process what's going on, as things go south fast at the Pleiades Watchtower. Danger everywhere he looks, and the strangers are dropping like flies. Natsuki Subaru starts dying and looping, and the strangers around him look to him on how to get out of this situation. All of this pressure and expectations begin to crush him. The new Natsuki Subaru breaks down, wondering how he could be this awesome hero that everyone expects him to be. This continues until Natsuki Subaru stumbles upon his Book of the Dead. In Chapter 74 of Arc 6, we have Subaru's name chapter, and honestly, it might be my favorite chapter in the series. In Chapter 74, there is a very powerful moment where the new Natsuki Subaru and Subaru have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about his struggles and experiences in this new world. It ends with the two versions of Subaru merging, like how Sora and Roxas did in Kingdom Hearts 2. But before the Subarus merge, the new Natsuki Subaru tells Subaru how awesome he truly is and how much he respects him. Don't believe me? It's right there in the text. Natsuki Subaru, you are an amazing guy. I sincerely know that, if it's you, then it'll certainly be alright. To which Natsuki Subaru happily and simply replied, Yeah. For someone to enjoy ReZero, you need to be invested in Subaru's character and journey, given that it doesn't have traditional stakes in most stories due to Return by Death. I believe that ReZero was able to do a great job of doing this for the first six arcs. Subaru's journey was interesting and compelling enough to keep myself and many people interested in the series. However, after Arc 6 is where I started to have problems with Subaru's character. Subaru's name chapter in Arc 6 Chapter 74 was a perfect way to resolve his imposter syndrome and showing that he finally understands that he matters as a person and how awesome he really is. When both of the Subarus come together, it's poetic as it truly shows us that Subaru has finally understood self-love. In Arc 7, Subaru's character has completely regressed as he is back to doubting himself and begins to see himself as a return by death tool again, completely ruining all of the progress and lessons that he's learned in becoming a better person and learning to love himself. Subaru's character gets completely derailed in Arc 7. Each chapter I read, I feel like I'm going insane, because not only has Subaru's character regressed, it's getting to a point where I'm wondering, is this the same character I grew to love in the last six arcs? In Chapter 30 of Arc 7, in the aftermath of the Bloodless Siege, Rem is upset that she doesn't have her memories and is unable to heal as well compared to when she had her memories. Subaru tries to comfort her but makes it all about himself by saying that it was all his fault that the Bloodless Siege plan failed. Rightfully, Rem gets pissed off and calls Subaru out on this. The result of your Bloodless Siege, the fact that you covered for me at that moment, and even the fact that Mazelda lost her leg, you're trying to take on everything on your own. And then she breaks Subaru's spirit by saying the following, You aren't a special person, because you're not a hero. Subaru's actions here bother me greatly. First off, Subaru trying to comfort Rem and then making it all about himself, this is something I would have expected out of arcs 1-4 through four Subaru, when he was still thinking about himself and hadn't learned empathy yet. If you guys remember Subaru and Amelia's heart-to-heart -heart conversation in arc 4, 
For the first half of it, Subaru wasn't really hearing out Amelia and trying to understand what she's going through. It isn't until Subaru remembers how his mom showed him true empathy, understanding the pain and self-hatred he had for being selfish and not living up to their expectations. Subaru finally begins listening to Amelia and shows her that he's going to love her and support her through anything that she goes through and that he believes in her. Outside of that, I think what pissed me off the most about this scene is how stupid Subaru is. In Arc 4, when Subaru is at his breaking point, the Witch of Les Carmilla comes to him as Rem and tells him that it's okay to leave everything to her. When Subaru couldn't think straight and was scared for his life, he could still tell that this isn't something that Rem would say and told Carmilla to get lost. But now Tape wants me to believe that a Subaru, who isn't at his breaking point, knows that the current Rem doesn't have her memories and is not the same Rem that he loves. On top of all of this, Subaru would lose all spirit and become broken by this Rem, who isn't truly the real Rem. I don't believe it for one second, with the Subaru that I've seen and got invested in for six arcs. Some may argue that the only reason that Subaru got crushed by Rem's words here is because this physically is Rem and not an imposter, or that Subaru is in a very vulnerable state given that his bloodless siege plan failed in his own eyes. He's in an unknown land with no allies. He needs to get Rem back home safely, and you can argue this might be the most alone that Subaru has ever been, which would explain why Rem's words cut a lot deeper than they probably would have in more normal circumstances. I would argue that Subaru was in his most vulnerable state in Arc 4, where he has suffered his worst death so far, that being getting eaten alive by the Great Rabbit, along with seeing a broken Amelia giving him his first kiss as he laid on her lap dying. Roswell, who he thought was a trusted ally, wants him to go insane and give up his human heart so he can have the resolve to only care for Amelia and be okay with sacrificing human lives. When Subaru's mind was on the verge of actually breaking, Echidna had to send Carmilla to intervene. Springing to his feet, Subaru howls as he takes distance from this Rem before him, keeping her in his sights. Still on her knees, Rem looks up to Subaru from her low position wordlessly. Even now, he could about drown from the sadness in her expression at being rejected. No, no, no. Please listen, Subaru. I… I was wrong. Just, I couldn't bear watching you in suffering. And so, I merely… I wanted you to forget the pain and rest for now. I'll let you see my weakness, I'll let you see that I'm a pathetic, worthless bastard, but I'll never let you see me giving up. My weakness belongs to Rem, she hides all of my weakness, and in exchange, even if I have to grapple it in tight, I'm not letting my surrender happen. Fuck off, you fake. Don't goddamn coddle me wearing my Rem's face and voice. That firmly declared, Subaru jabs his fist out at Rem, at the imposter. The listener is at a loss for words. They cast their gaze down, standing silently on the spot. Despite being at the point where his mind nearly broke, Subaru was still able to tell that this was not his Rem and renewed his vow to never give up, because not only would Rem not want him to, she would not be as easy on him to allow him to give up. Compared to Arc 7, where Subaru is equipped with two witch factors, he's more athletic, he's able to use a whip, he also understands to share the burden and rely on others to get things done. He's become more mature and capable when it comes to high stress situations. I can understand that Subaru would be on edge around Lewis as she is a ticking time bomb, so there's not much that I can say there. He might not like or always agree with Vincent, but he is willing to assist Subaru as long as he is willing to help him get his throne back. Subaru also has the O'Connell siblings that he can rely on, he has the Shudrax on his side, and he also has Al as well. Given that Al was the one who got Subaru back on his feet after Rem told him that he was not a hero. Both situations suck, but I truly believe that Arc 7 Subaru has way more at his disposal to survive and escape Valakia without suffering a major loss. I also don't see how an older and a more mature version of Subaru, who is starting to understand how awesome and important he is, would be shattered that Rem, who clearly is not the same person that he loves, doesn't view him as a hero. I would expect Rem's words of you're not a hero to shake or bother Subaru in some way, given that for most of the series he kept going due to Rem seeing him as a hero, but not to the point he's trying to bash his skull into pieces and losing his will to go on. Back in Arc 3, when Subaru was at his breaking point, he needed Rem's words to validate that he is a hero, because he has not confronted his past and has not overcome his insecurities about himself. 
I would expect that version of Subaru to be crushed by Rem's words here. Subaru has come a long way and grown as a person where he doesn't need someone's validation to just live and push on. I know that Subaru has used Rem's words to keep him going since Arc 3 with the whole from zero moment, but it's that Rem's words. It's not an imposter posing as Rem, it's not a Rem who is suspicious of him to the point that she would kill him, it's not a Rem who has lost her memories, it's Subaru's Rem. The Rem who stood by his side at his lowest in Arc 3 and told him to stand up countless of times. This was a missed opportunity to demonstrate Subaru's journey and growth as a character, to show that while Subaru has yet to be truly tested on his newfound self-worth, he's long past the point where he completely relies on Rem's validation of him to keep going, that while he might be shaken for a bit, he'll be able to bounce back. Some might argue that mental health affects everyone differently, and Subaru is a clear example of this. I do agree and understand that point of view. However, I think it's fair to say for the most part, people's mental health don't regress without a reason. Whether it be suffering from massive withdrawal from an addiction that helped you escape from the troubles and pain from reality, or losing someone that you cared about and struggling to let go of them, or being unable to support yourself and the others around you, there is always someone or something that you can normally point to being the root cause of the regression. I don't buy Subaru's regression in Arc 7 even before he gets turned into a kid, but we'll get back to that later in the video. I don't understand what could possibly be the reason behind Subaru's regression here. I wouldn't mind Subaru slightly regressing by having his newfound self-worth actually being challenged, by Subaru suffering a permanent loss that he can't undo. I can understand why Subaru would be broken by that and doubt himself, given up to this point, Subaru has yet to actually lose someone that he truly cares about permanently. But the thing is, even when you struggle with self-doubt and self-worth issues, when you start the process of healing and have that moment of understanding of how awesome you truly are, like Subaru did in Arc 6, you do get better. The doubt isn't fully gone and it may never go away, but now you aren't beating yourself up for no reason anymore. The key thing being that there's always a reason that ignites the doubt coming back, like a massive failure on your part. I would have expected Subaru to understand that this is not his Rem, but he needs to focus on getting them back home safely so he can bring the true Rem back. But Tape needed to make Subaru act like a selfish asshole here, so Rem can tell him that he's not a hero to redo the whole imposter syndrome character arc. After hearing that he's not special and a hero from Rem, the person who believed in him and he swore to become the most awesome hero for, Subaru breaks down and starts slamming his head against a wall. Al had to come and grab him by the shoulder telling him, I understand the feeling of wanting to die, but no matter how many times you do that, there's going to be no end to that sort of thing. Al goes on to give Subaru a pep talk and lets him know that Subaru has a heroic reputation that he won't let die. This moment between Subaru and Al is meant to put Subaru back on his feet and make us want to root for Subaru to overcome his doubts about his self-worth and being a hero. There's two problems with this. The first problem is that Subaru's character has already reached the point of learning to love himself with his name chapter in Arc 6. Subaru should not be having any doubts about his self-worth, which leads me right into the second problem. If you really think about it, Subaru's realization of self-worth has not been challenged at all, so it doesn't make any sense why he should doubt himself. Subaru has been able to get the best outcome 99.9% .9 of the time. Everyone that he loves and cares about, which is mostly the Amelia faction, have not been permanently killed or lost a limb. Some may argue, but Rem lost her memories and fell into a coma. That is not Subaru's fault. He wasn't even near Rem when she fought greed and gluttony. But let's say for argument's sake that I do agree with you and Subaru did fail to save Rem there. That still doesn't change the fact that Rem is alive and awake in Arc 7 with a chance to regain her memories and let's be honest, she will get them back. I guess some people could even argue that Subaru failed to save Shala, but she's still alive. She's just currently a scorpion and follows Mei Li, so there's a chance that she can regain her humanity by the end of the series. And with how ReZero has been going, I would not be surprised if she did get her humanity back through Amelia winning the election and using the dragon blood on Shala. If Tape wanted to continue Subaru's character arc of self-worth, there's only two paths that I can think of. The first one is the one that it seemed like the story was heading towards, where Subaru has finally started learning to love himself and realizing his self-worth and have it be put to the test. There has never been a moment where you could argue that it was bad for Subaru to return by death. Every time Subaru has returned by death, someone that Subaru cares about dies or Subaru loses a limb or two, and then Subaru gets killed right after. There hasn't ever been a time where Subaru got a good outcome and returned by death which put him in a worse position than he was already at. 
Like imagine if Subaru was in a very hard loop. He's died countless times and was making zero progress in solving it. But in this current attempt, he gets lucky and is able to live longer than his previous loops and finally makes progress. But when Subaru turns around, he notices that someone he really cares about is either gone or has lost a limb. Now Subaru has a moral dilemma. He can choose to accept that he tried his best and he needs to do whatever he can to save himself and the others who are still alive, or he can choose to return my death and try to save everyone. But here's the real kicker. Let's say that Subaru chooses the option to kill himself to try and save this person, but his checkpoint updates so he can't go back. Do you know how powerful that would be? It would finally force Subaru to enter the final stage of grief of acceptance. Like it or not, Subaru will have to accept that he will never be able to save this person again and quickly realize that life isn't so forgiving to wait for you. Life goes on and Subaru needs to move and focus on saving the others who are still alive and need him. It will also finally solve the problem of return by death just being a blessing and not a curse. Satella gave this power to Subaru because she's madly in love with him. It's to prevent Subaru's story from ending, not the others. It's a very selfish love as seen how she killed Amelia in cold blood in front of Subaru. This would be the ultimate test for Subaru's character going forward and making things interesting again. I also want to say that if Tappy doesn't want to or can't kill off someone in the Amelia camp, that is okay. I'm not someone who wants Subaru to constantly suffer and there needs to be bloodshed or there's no stakes. You can still have Subaru fail and suffer consequences that carry over to other loops. Remember when the Royal Selection was a thing? Yeah, me too. You can bring the Royal Selection back into the story in a meaningful way by forcing Subaru to use himself as a return by death tool for a loop to save a group of innocent people that he doesn't know, which will come at the expense of his body and mind. Or because of Subaru's inability to return by death to try and save the group of people with the Amelia faction, it damages Amelia's chances at winning the election. Because right now, the Amelia camp has been running away with the royal selection, and if you didn't read any of the side stories, you'd probably think that the other candidates are as effective as the politicians that we have in our actual world. Going back to the other path that you can take Subaru's character after Arc 6, and is currently the path that his character is going, Subaru realizes that he can save everyone, gets the happy ending that he wants, still love and value himself, and suffer virtually zero consequences, which would be a terrible and very sad way for ReZero to go out. What makes us get invested into characters is that they are relatable and human, and to be human, you need to have flaws. The way that ReZero has been heading, Subaru has gone from a flawed young man trying to desperately get by, to a hero who does not know permanent defeat. He's always able to get a happy outcome and gets praised for it, but still doubts himself for what exactly. Yes, I get it that everyone around Subaru does not know of his failed loops to get the desired outcome, but Subaru has never suffered a loss so devastating that it should make him doubt the path that he's been taking. I'm not saying that Subaru needs to suffer a great loss so he gives up his ideals and sacrifices his morals, because you can still have a well-written character who puts others before himself all the time and suffers loss to the point that he doubts himself. Look no further than Thorfinn from Vinland Saga, who wants to save everyone he can, but refuses to sacrifice his morals to do so. Just like Subaru, he values the lives of others before himself. Thorfinn has a strict code that he lives by. He has no enemies and there is no one that it's okay to hurt, even if it would be for the greater good. Thorfinn will not pick up a weapon and point it at someone again. It's similar to how Subaru values his life and doesn't want to be used as a tool just to make other people happy. While Thorfinn also doubts his journey of no violence and having no enemies, it comes at a cost. There are several situations where you could argue, had Thorfinn been willing to pick up a weapon or harm slash kill someone, he could have saved the lives of people that he cared about. Not to mention, there are several characters throughout Vinland Saga who criticize and look down upon Thorfinn's new way of living by calling him a weakling and laughing at him for how stupid his goal sounds. I can understand why Thorfinn occasionally has doubts about if his new way of living is feasible and how he's come very close to giving up on it. This isn't the case with Subaru, because after Subaru started to value his life and not use himself as a return by death tool, he never faces any permanent consequences for it. He doesn't lose anyone that he cares about for it, he constantly gets praised for his efforts, but Subaru still doubts why people hail him as a hero and that he's not worthy. Until Subaru faces some sort of permanent consequence or gets challenged for choosing his path of self-love and worth, I can't believe in or feel invested in Subaru's doubt about himself. The biggest thing I hate about Arc 7 and 8 is how Subaru has been turned into a child. Thanks to Olbart, Subaru has been reverted to his 10-year-old self, 
along with his thinking and memory slowly diminishing the longer he stays this way. I wouldn't have any problems with this if it only lasted during the whole loop with Albart where they had to play hide and seek tag with him. But before Subaru could finally get turned back into an adult, Satella was pissed for Albart messing with her connection with Subaru and completely engulfed Chaos Flame in black and swept Subaru away to Gladiator Island, which keeps Subaru as a child and extends his stay in Valakia. Tape has a very nasty habit of making things very vague and left up to interpretation, which leaves the door open to explain why said thing happened and why it's not a plot convenience. Subaru being swept away to the Gladiator Island being a clear example of this. Personally, it feels like Tape did this to have a reason to keep Subaru as a kid and separate him from the group. Some might argue that Subaru's character regression here is justified. I disagree because everything surrounding it is vague. Like how does it affect Subaru's memory? Does he just slowly lose his memories from this world until they're no more? Does it affect his personality? If so, how? Like we know that Olbart's ability to turn people into kids is based on altering their ode, but it happens to affect Subaru and Al in different ways. Why you may ask? We don't know. It might just have something to do with the fact that they're not from this world. But even with that, it's still weird because Al still has scars on his face and is missing an arm like he did as an adult. It also seems like Al didn't really have any memory problems while stuck as a kid. So why is it affecting Subaru so greatly and not so much with Al? To me, it feels like Kid Subaru's memory problems are a massive plot convenience to explain why Subaru's acting out of character at times, why Return by Death is acting strangely, and sending Subaru to Gladiator Island, along with halting Subaru's progression of becoming a better person and loving himself. In Arc 7 and Arc 8, there is a big focus on emphasizing how cutthroat the Valakian Empire is. The strong survive and the weak are left to die, and how it directly goes against Subaru's ideology of sacrificing no one and trying to save everyone. This is shown as Subaru is constantly butting heads with the Emperor of Valakia, Vincent Valakia. It seems like Arc 7 and Arc 8 was going to challenge Subaru's self-worth and his ideology of saving everyone, which would have been awesome and had a lot of potential. You can see this as early as Arc 7 Chapter 20 as both Subaru and Vincent are discussing on how to capture the city of Guraral. Naturally, whether you accept it or not, what we are engaging in now is war. Come what may, casualties cannot be avoided. All that can be done is planning to avoid the waste of human resources. Well, I don't like your way of thinking about human resources to begin with. Looking down on Abel, sitting cross-legged right in front of him, Subaru clicked his tongue. The term human resources was a combination of two words, humans and resources. One that Subaru thought should not be combined into such an abhorrent term whatsoever. Subaru's line of thinking here matches up with his character from what we've seen in the first six arcs, but for some reason his line of thinking magically changes in Arc 7 Chapter 105. The line of Imperial soldiers with shrouded heads being frozen in place had been crushed by the first attack of the Pleiades Battalion, which had come rushing in with their outlandish fighting style, rendering them powerless in order to take away their weapons and armor, as well as breaking any of their limbs so they could be left behind, had been the fundamental tactic of the battalion, reflecting the fighting style and intentions of their boss, Subaru. It was not like he was hell-bent on not killing anyone. Still, he had opted for a method that would result in as few human deaths as possible. Doing so was the best for Natsuki Subaru's peace of mind, and at the same time, I hate the Valakian Empire. It was his revenge, revenge against the Empire that forced people to fight and kill each other, just in order to be a warrior. Remember in Arc 5 Chapter 20 when Subaru had to save Lustbell who was being held hostage by Sirius? Subaru had the option to be selfish and save his own hide by looking the other way. This is what he thought. So, if Subaru only wanted to live, he could just not go. Sirius wouldn't appear near Subaru. There didn't seem to be any specific target, and Subaru just happened to be there. Therefore, even if Subaru wasn't present, that square would still be Sirius' crime scene. The speech that was unrelated to Subaru's presence would happen in its original location, and everyone there would be affected. However, no matter how that turned out, that falling child would be doomed to die. I have to stop it. Damn, I have to. Subaru scratched his head and arrived at a decision. He couldn't not save him. That child, Luspel, was looking forward to a newborn brother or sister, and he had taken his childhood sweetheart's place on that tower. How could anyone be so shameless as to think of only themselves and not attempt to rescue him? And in Arc 5 Chapter 21, after failing to save Luspel on his own and choking to death on his own vomit, Subaru still didn't run away to save himself. 
No contact would be made with Sirius, and he wouldn't need to lay eyes on her. He could take the opportunity to launch a preemptive strike, and he'd be able to ensure that he wouldn't have to trigger return by death again. Only, he would have to disregard the sacrifice of a courageous child, and so Subaru could never seriously consider such an option. Sacrifices were necessary. Who would be self-righteous enough to say such a thing, to decide on a utilitarian greater good at the price of other lives, from the perspective of those who were sacrificed, meant that the entire world would be lost. Subaru could not tolerate the loss of his own life, so how could he arrogantly place a price tag on the lives of others? This line of thinking is one of the things that I loved about Subaru's character. As long as there was something that Subaru could do about it, he would risk his mind, body, and soul to try and save that person in need. I want to stress that Subaru had no personal connection to Luspel. He knew nothing about him. It really shows that Subaru has learned empathy and understands that everyone matters to somebody, somewhere. It would be extremely selfish and arrogant of him to decide that this kid's life doesn't matter more than his own, when he has the power and ability to save him. Even with the fact that Subaru's memory has been affected in some way since being turned into a kid, there was never a point where Subaru was okay with putting a price on human lives. Even before he came to Lagunica, Subaru has never acted this way. When has Subaru wanted to get revenge on actual human beings? I'm talking about getting revenge by killing someone. But here, Subaru wants to get revenge against an entire empire that has innocent people trying to live their lives and that he knows nothing about. Subaru has gone from refusing to sacrifice and killing normal people to being okay with letting some random people that he knows nothing about die because he doesn't like the culture of their empire. I would understand if Subaru realizes that it's foolish to expect that no one will die in a war and that he can't save everyone, which I would actually support. But for Subaru to be willing to let people die when there is something that he can do about it completely goes against his character. It's arrogant of Subaru to think that he's a better person than Vincent and the entire Empire of Valakia. When push comes to shove, he's no better than them. It was already bad enough seeing Subaru become very cold and uncaring towards random innocent people. But the worst part was seeing how his hard and well-earned self-love for himself was spit on and ruined in Arc 7 Chapter 67 with one of the most controversial moves in the series. Can you prepare a poison that can instantly kill a person just by biting or licking it? He felt terrible for Old Man Null, but this was necessary. It would be a bigger problem for Subaru to pass out in the middle of a fight or survive some half-assed way. There had to be a way for him to start over, and once he obtained the means to do so, Subaru would be absolutely perfect. On the surface, you would probably think, so what? Subaru just needs to be able to return by death so he can leave Gladiator Island in one piece and reunite with Rem and the others. Not only does this go against Subaru wanting to value his life more and not be a return by death tool, he's hurting the people that he cares about. If you remember in Arc 4, when Subaru's mind is on the verge of breaking after he tries to take the Sanctuary second trial, Carmilla approaches him as Rem to comfort him. Subaru breaks down in her arms and tells her, If worlds continue after I die, then how many times, places, people, did I leave everyone to die? How many times did I let you die? How many times do I need to kill you? On top of all of this, Echidna goes on to tell Subaru that there is a possibility that worlds where Subaru does die do continue to exist. So in a way, Subaru choosing to ask Old Man Null to create a poison for him so he can restart whenever he wants means that Subaru is okay with the fact that he might be choosing to leave the current world's Amelia, Rem, Beatrice, and his other loved ones to suffer and die without him. In a way, Subaru is willingly choosing to sacrifice them for a future version of them to be happy with. And who is to say that Subaru wouldn't sacrifice the future version of his loved ones the next time around? I don't need it to be in front of your face where Subaru goes, Oh my god, if I die here, I'm leaving Amelia, Rem, Beatrice, and everyone to die. Just make it subtle where no matter what, Subaru tries to survive every encounter and live for as long as possible. Instead of being so willing to throw away his life, after he knows what potentially happens to all of the worlds and people that he leaves behind. Some people might say that Subaru only thought about this in Arc 4 because he found out of potential worlds continuing when he dies after the second trial in the Sanctuary. However, this thought does linger in Subaru's mind as recent as Arc 7. You can see this through his actions as he put himself between Arakia and Rem and thought to himself, in a selfless attempt to save her from being attacked by Arakia, Subaru had stood in front of Rem, his hands outstretched, he had been desperate to keep any threat away from Rem. At that moment, Subaru did not care if Arakia were to take his life. He wanted Rem to outlive him, for even a second longer. 
For kids, Subaru to be completely okay with using himself as a return by death tool to diminish the value of his own life, the people that he cares about, and the worlds that he will be leaving behind when he dies, that doesn't sit right with me. It bothers me a lot. It completely goes against the wishes and philosophy that Subaru from the previous six arcs lived and died by. It really makes Kid Subaru seem like a selfish piece of shit when you really think about it, and we've been long past that point. I'm praying that Tape returns Subaru back to normal soon. I can't stand to see Kid Subaru any longer. One of the biggest problems with ReZero currently is that it mostly has very weak antagonists, because Return by Death allows Subaru to save everyone that they might end up hurting or killing. The only way that antagonists can work well in a story like ReZero is if they challenge the protagonist's ideology or moral system. I know a lot of people who like Arc 7 will probably say that Todd is a great antagonist and foil to Subaru. To that I have to say, what separates Todd from the other ReZero antagonists? Is it that he gives a Mr. X or Nemesis presence in the story by chasing Subaru and trying to kill him? That would be kind of cool and interesting if that were the case, but what made Mr. X and Nemesis scary is that they are a randomized ongoing threat that put us on the edge of our seat because we had no idea when they would show up and if they did, there was a good chance that the player would have to drain precious resources to kill them or try to run away without taking much damage. Otherwise, you were looking at a game over and having your progress reset. The key takeaway here being that you take an actual loss when you encounter one of them. The problem with Todd is that he suffers the same problem as the other ReZero antagonists. He can only threaten Subaru physically by killing him or the people that he cares about. I use the word threaten generously here because neither Todd or the other antagonists have been able to kill someone Subaru cares about or cause them any permanent damage. None of them are able to give Subaru a permanent loss that he has to carry with him or a lesson to learn. Subaru only really learns important lessons from his allies, such as Rem and Otto. Because of this, I can't buy into Subaru's fear of losing someone that he cares about or a part of him permanently. I'm not on the edge of my seat wondering if Subaru and the others will get out of this unharmed because up until this point, Subaru and the others have always gotten the best possible outcome with the chance to undo any setbacks in the future. I mean, yeah, Todd is better than the other antagonists in the series, such as Elsa and all of the Synarch bishops already, due to not being evil for the sake of being evil or having a weird fetish. He's scared of Subaru and wants to get back home to his fiancée as soon as possible. Todd can be seen as a foil of what Subaru could have been had he not learned his lessons of self-worth and learning to trust in other people. But I feel like that was ruined when you realize that Todd isn't really a human, but is a werewolf and he's a sociopath, killing innocent people just to kill Subaru. I guess in a sense, he's kind of like how most of the what-if versions of Subaru end up, become devoted to one person or goal, doing whatever it takes for that person or goal, and be okay with killing innocent people if they get in the way. I think Todd could have been amazing if he complemented the series theme of self-love. If Todd was able to be the one antagonist that makes Subaru truly appreciate what he has. Todd was so close to teaching Subaru this lesson at Gladiator Island. I apologize because I'm about to butcher these names. When Todd had killed Whites, Idra, and Hian in one loop, it was looking like Subaru was finally going to lose people that he had gotten to know and care about. But Tappe was afraid to let Subaru suffering losing someone permanently and make him be afraid of return by death again, because up to this point, Satella has made it so every checkpoint that Subaru has, he's able to save the people that he cares about. For me to care about a ReZero antagonist, you need to challenge Subaru's morals or belief system. Because of Return by Death and the way that it's been working, there is literally no way that you can threaten Subaru or the people that he cares about physically. There has been only one antagonist in ReZero that I thought was done well and had a lot of potential. Arc 4 had an interesting conflict where Roswell tried to force Subaru into making a sacrifice, save Amelia and everyone in the sanctuary, or save Rem and everyone back at the mansion. Because you know that both are very near and dear to Subaru's heart, which helps you get invested because Subaru cares a lot and is working himself to the bone literally to try and save both. What made Roswell such a threatening antagonist was because he directly challenged Subaru's naive belief that he will be able to defy fate and save everyone, and Roswell was trying to teach him that's not how life works and tried to teach him that in his own twisted fucked up way. Not
not to mention that Roswell also knew that Subaru had the ability to restart and put Subaru in a situation where he physically can't save both on his own. After Subaru managed to overcome Roswell's plans without sacrificing his beliefs of not sacrificing anyone, Tape quickly realized that he had just lost his best antagonist so far and a way to challenge Subaru going forward. And what does Tape do? He has Roswell threaten Subaru that if he were to fail to save anyone that he cares about, he will kill the remaining ones before he dies himself, forcing Subaru to restart. When you first think about it, you would probably think to yourself, oh shit, the pressure is on Subaru big time. He can't let anyone he cares about die, otherwise Roswell will kill everyone else and force Subaru to restart. It sounds hype as hell. I can't blame you for thinking this way, because I had thought this way for years. It wasn't until Arc 7 where it finally set in for me that Roswell's threat holds no weight. Every single time that someone that Subaru cares about dies, he always dies right after. Subaru was already operating under the assumption that he needs to save everyone that he cares about, so what does Roswell's threat change exactly? I I know that Subaru doesn't want to kill himself or use himself as a reset everything tool with Return by Death, but do you really think if Amelia or Rem dies in front of him, but he lives, that he wouldn't go ahead and kill himself to try and save them? He's not going to enjoy doing it, but he still will do whatever he can to save the people that he cares about. This is completely poor writing on Tape's part because it creates a plot hole, plot convenience, and plot armor for the entire Amelia camp and anyone that Subaru cares about. In volume 15, page 253 of the ReZero Light novels, Roswell literally says, I have lost the battle. In accordance with my vow, I can inflict no harm upon you. Should I renounce this vow, my soul shall be tainted and my flesh enveloped and burned away by the purifying fire, and my soul shall fall into the void, never to return to Ode Ragana again. That is what I have sworn. But he goes on to contradict himself 20 pages later. Roswell says, And now that you have rejected the path of the sage and chosen the path of the fool, I will never allow you to compromise. Is this not natural? It is you who wished for this. Hereafter, if you lose someone around you who you should have protected, I will swiftly burn the remaining others away without hesitation and with the cursed seal become ash myself. If you want to say it's a translation error, here's what the web novel says. You've chosen to save everything. You must not miscarry a single thing. A world of loss must not lead to the future. So long as a future where you accept loss could lead to a future I do not desire, I will invalidate it. Now that the gospel is gone, you are what guides me to my goal, Subaru. Only you and your path. No matter how you slice it, either this is a plot hole due to the contradiction of Roswell's contract because if he dares to hurt either Amelia, Rem, Beatrice, Rom, Otto, Garfield, Frederica, and Petra, he will be burned to a crisp immediately. But if that's not the case, and Roswell will only be reduced to ash after he's killed every single one of the people that I've mentioned, then it's a massive plot convenience, because now all of those characters have been granted plot armor and removes any stakes associated with them. No longer do I wonder if Otto and Garfield will survive a battle, because if anything happens to them, I know that soon Subaru will die soon, because Subaru has to save all of them. On top of this, this threat is left intentionally vague given that Roswell says, Hereafter, if you lose someone around you who you should have protected, it opens the door to have Roswell act on his threat by killing the entire Amelia camp if someone like Flop or Medium dies. Roswell's threat is a very stupid way to justify plot armor for the entire Amelia camp and anyone that Tape deems important enough to survive until the end of the story. I honestly wish that Tape just had Roswell hold his L and assist Subaru and Amelia as promised or written out of the story entirely by being forced out of the Amelia camp due to his actions in Arc 4. Return by Death, Love It or Hate It, is one of the core staples of the ReZero franchise. It's not very often that you can go around casually telling people that the main character of a story dies and it's not a spoiler. At first glance, it's a really cool idea and very interesting. Every time he dies, the main character Natsuki Subaru returns to a predetermined checkpoint to make everything right and save everyone that he cares about. However, while Return by Death started off as a cool plot device, 
that added tension because you didn't know what was going to happen to Subaru if he died and where the checkpoint could be updated, Return by Death has gotten to a point where it's starting to hold the story back and has become a blessing rather than a curse on Subaru. The first problem with Return by Death starts halfway through Arc 4, when Subaru finds out that Return by Death doesn't have a limit from Echidna. There is a huge shift on how he views Return by Death. It actively removes his fear that if he dies, he could actually die for real. It also removes the tension of making the audience wonder if Subaru will be able to return by death if he dies again. After Arc 4, if Subaru is on the verge of dying, to try and cope with the pain, he can cling on to the fact that his story doesn't end here and that he can and will be able to make things right. Subaru knowing that Return by Death has no limit also ruins powerful moments where Subaru sacrifices his life to save others, like the time he jumped off the cliff to save Rem and Rom back in Arc 2 or when he stabbed himself to try and undo Rem's coma. It truly showed how much Subaru cared about the people around him as he was under the impression that it isn't guaranteed that he'll come back. Outside of Arc 6, when Subaru loses his memories, Subaru doesn't break down like he previously did when he dies, when he's so scared and in pain to the point that he can't even move. Now when Subaru dies, he finds himself getting nauseous and checks his body to confirm that everything's back to normal, and then gets back to trying to solve the loop that he's currently in. It's as if he's become numb to the fear of death, because he knows that Return by Death has no limit, and that he'll be able to find a way to save everyone that he cares about. A perfect example of this is in Arc 7 Chapter 64. Of course, Subaru would die as many times, and yet he raised his head still and proceeded forward. Natsuki Subaru yelled back at the inconsiderate voice, and though his entire body was bathed in death from the asylum claws, Natsuki Subaru still refused to desist. That's why, next time, I won't lose. Compare this to Arc 4, when Subaru dies to the Great Rabbit for the first time. Screaming almost insane in pain and understanding, Subaru tumbles himself towards the rabbit. His broken right arm is immovable, and his left arm from the wrist down exists in the rabbit's stomach. There's nothing he can do, but if he at least confirms its true nature, his calf burns, a sharp rasping shaves into his meat and bone, stinging to shoot his eye fully open, foam gushing from the back of his throat. To lay his head and faint would be great. The ferocious throes of agony seem unwilling to release him. Here, Subaru is in so much pain that he can't even think straight. He can hope that this isn't the end of his story, but he doesn't have that assurance like he does in Arc 7, where instead of wallowing in his pain and wishing for it to end, Subaru is hyper fixated on the next attempt being the one that solves the loop. Just like Subaru past Arc 4, I've also become numb to Return by Death and Subaru dying, as it's become a way to excuse Subaru's regression as a character and prevents him from dealing with consequences that actually matter. Before you say, but his gate broke, that's a long term consequence, or Subaru's arm and leg are now black after Arc 5, I would agree that they could have been good long term consequences if they weren't either worthless or something that Subaru didn't care about like his gait. Because his magic abilities were already ass and he was told up front that his potential was extremely limited. Subaru also can still use magic through Beatrice, so it's not like he can't use magic at all anymore, and not to mention, the mana poisoning plot point, which was meant to be a direct consequence of Subaru abusing his gate, had no substance to it because Subaru never died from mana poisoning or felt its side effects, as he was turned into a child and was able to reunite with Beatrice. It feels as if Tape threw that in there to add more stakes and pressure for Subaru to get out of Valakia, but we all knew that Subaru will get out of it either by reuniting with Beatrice or someone else who can drain his mana, otherwise it's GG's for him and there's literally nothing he can do. I thought that Subaru's arm and leg becoming black from losing to Capella was a good long term consequence. Not to blame Subaru, because he wouldn't know, but having Subaru and a washed up version of Krush go against one of the strongest Synarch bishops should result in a massive loss. Subaru gets his black arm blown off in Arc 7, but not only does it regenerate, it's no longer black and becomes a normal arm again. It's no longer a hindrance to him, but could actually be an asset to him. It's very frustrating to just see a main character succeed but come out in the end unharmed, with no losses, lessons learned, or personal realizations made, and that's where Subaru's character has been heading recently. It's not that I want ReZero to have a bad ending, where Subaru loses people that he cares about and takes massive blows to his mental state. Far from it. I want Subaru to have a happy ending, but I want it to be earned. I was invested in Subaru's journey because he was riddled with flaws. That is what makes him feel alive and human, and a relatable character. Seeing Subaru slowly work through and learn from his failures to overcome his flaws one by one was satisfying, as he continued to grow as a character. If a character never fails or loses in some way, that alienates the audience, 
Because as humans, we can't relate to people who are perfect or never fail. The way that Subaru is now, how is he supposed to grow when he never permanently fails and suffers the consequences of his actions? At some point or another, Subaru needs to suffer a permanent loss, seeing the people that Subaru cares about, or seeing Subaru die brutally, before resetting to a convenient checkpoint where Subaru has enough time and resources has made me numb. There are five stages of grief that all humans normally go through. The steps are as follows. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Subaru has gone through the first four stages of grief many times in the series, but he has never gone through the step of acceptance. He's never had to. In fact, he bypasses the final step entirely because Return by Death makes it so Subaru can still save the people that he cares about and never have to accept that they're gone forever. The way that Return by Death has been used in the story so far, I don't see how Subaru will go through the stage of acceptance. Given that we know every single time Subaru dies, the checkpoint is conveniently moved to a point where Subaru has the ability to save the people that he cares about. It doesn't make sense why Satella has continued to put Subaru in ideal situations where he can save everyone that he cares about. Satella only cares for Subaru's survival, and that's it. Otherwise, why would she have crushed Amelia's heart in Arc 3 after Subaru broke the taboo, knowing that Subaru cares about Amelia and she is someone that Subaru would die for to save? How is Subaru supposed to be able to accept that there's nothing more that he can do and that he has to move on with his life? I'm not saying that Subaru needs to pretend that whoever he loses was never a part of his life, but learning to move forward with your life to honor their memory and care for yourself. Subaru needs to learn through acceptance that it's impossible to save everyone and get an outcome that is good for everyone. He needs to accept that his worth is not tied to being able to save everyone and living up to other people's expectations. But Subaru's worth comes from the very fact that he exists and that trying his best is all that matters. As long as Subaru knows that he did everything in his power to get the best possible outcome, he can be at peace with himself and move forward. Given that Tape seemed to have listened to that one dude's tweet all the way back in 2013 about having Subaru put poison in his teeth, if Tape somehow stumbles upon this video, which is very unlikely, here's my open letter to Tape. I'm begging you to take a hiatus or a break to fully plan out ReZero and please keep your cards to your chest. You're writing yourself into massive potholes or corners by not having enough time to check the rules or character arcs that you have already established. Please, please go back and focus on the royal selection, the previously established characters and fleshing them out, and start answering the mysteries that we've been waiting years for. We are currently three-fourths of the way through ReZero's story at the time of writing the script, and we are still waiting for answers to what Amelia's connection to Satella is and why Al is important to one of ReZero's three big mysteries. It's obvious to me that Tape is writing as he goes, given that he said in a Q&A in the past that there's no reason to head to the other countries. And here we are in Arc 7 and Arc 8, where Subaru and the gang are in Valakia. Tape needs to take a break, go through all of the pre-established rules that he has set and the mysteries that have been set up, and create a roadmap of how to stay within those rules to avoid creating plot holes and answering the mysteries in a natural and satisfying way. The last thing I want is ReZero's pacing to go to shit, and we're at the last arc of the series, and now Tape is scrambling to answer all of the mysteries that have yet to be solved in the final arc and create a bunch of plot holes or not have an answer for some mysteries. I know that I've mentioned about potentially doing an entire video on why I don't like Arc 7, but this script really took a lot out of me. It's depressing to see a series that I do enjoy and a main character that I can personally relate to start to decline in quality. Finishing Arc 7 and catching up to Arc 8 was a slog and not fun to read. I don't think I have it in me to once again go through every single thing that bothers me about both arcs, go back and reread all the arcs to make sure that the pre-established rules and character development is being followed. So don't get your hopes up for any Arc 7 or Arc 8 content from me, because I honestly don't want to think about it ever again. I really hope that Arc 8 ends soon and that ReZero can find its footing again. Otherwise, I don't think I'll be around for the end of the series. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.